Your Delta News begins in Bolivar County, where thieves lead police on a 100-mile pursuit. Cleveland Police Chief Buster Bingham tells us officers responded to a business burglary around 3.30 this morning at Hair Drugs. When officers arrived, they encountered a maroon vehicle with Tennessee license plates and three people inside. The car sped away on Highway 61 North. The Cleveland Police Department and other agencies chased the vehicle. After crossing the Tennessee state line, police lost sight of the car in local traffic and the robbers were able to escape. Bingham says drugs were taken from the business. The case is ongoing. Well, the Leland Police Department, the latest to get body cams. The Leland Board of Aldermen recently approved the use of body cameras for city officers. Police Chief Billy Barber says the city already purchased the cameras for about $7,000 for the department's 16 officers. Barber says the body cams will be ready for use within the next couple of weeks. Well, earlier this week, we told you Baxter Healthcare is shutting down some production lines at his Cleveland plant. Now the company says there will be layoffs as part of their new direction. Baxter manufacturers products. They manufacture products used in the delivery of fluids and drugs to patients. The company said the decision was made as part of a regular assessment of his portfolio and operations. Senior communications manager John O'Malley says, quote, during this time, we will work with employees to mitigate the impact to our workforce in Cleveland. This includes working with them to explore other opportunities within Baxter, end quote. Baxter employs nearly 950 people in Cleveland. Meantime, for those affected by last month's flash flooding, listen up. The war in Washington is Aquina Sharkey Community Action Agency, commonly known as WISCA, will give clothes to victims on Saturday. The giveaway will be held from 9 a.m. until 1 at the WISCA building located at 1165 South Raceway Road. Hot dogs and drinks will be served while supplies last. There will also be an energy conservation program and financial management education from 10 until noon. Well, a Greenville company introducing a new program to promote healthy living. Today, Mars Food announced the health and well-being ambition. Matt Hurst, corporate affairs manager for Mars Food North America, says the purpose of the initiative is to improve the nutritional content of Mars Food products to inspire healthy cooking and eating at home. As part of the program, Mars Food plans on reducing sodium and sugar. Mars is also offering more fruits and veggies in its products. Well, North New Summit School partners with Mississippi Community Education Center to host the Morning with Galo in the Delta event in Greenwood. Radio host Paul Galo broadcasted the Galo radio show live in the school gymnasium. The event featured live entertainment, refreshments, vendors, and door prizes. It also included a trail dedicated in memory of school representative Mabel Witten. Each garden spot that you will see in the background is either a math uh, theme or a storytelling theme or art. The students have been a part of getting the garden trail set up and I think this event kind of marks the hard work that they put into it. Just something for the kids to enjoy and to learn about food and nutrition and also to learn about where our food comes from. Well, North New Summit School officials tell us the Mabel Garden Trail is for both the school and public to enjoy. Well, the Cleveland High School Band taking home a prestigious award for the second year in a row. The band won the Sweepstakes Award after competing against 61 other schools in the MHSAA State Evaluation in Pearl. In order to win, the band had to earn a superior rating in each category. Band director Kelly Wallace hopes the awards will attract more members to join next year. The band performed earlier tonight at the Bologna Performing Arts Center. Well, the Delta Institution is celebrating diversity with a week of activities. Mississippi Valley State University observing International Week. WXVT's Woodrow Wilkins has more from Itabina. Promoting acceptance in the midst of complex global conflicts, international education in the 21st century. That's the theme of Mississippi Valley State University's Parade of Flags and Convocation. Everything happens for a reason, right? Be philosophical about uh, how things happen. It's all relative. Uh, stay balanced, stay hopeful, and always be prepared to deal with consequences. Keynote speaker Dr. David Wilson of the University of Delaware says one reason why people reject those who are unfamiliar or different is because it's easy. 
that accepting something is difficult. We need a lot of information for that to happen. And so it's a challenge. And so I wanted people to understand that we will, that we're really thinking about now, how do we build a model of acceptance? How do we actually move towards action of acceptance rather than just saying we value the idea. Presented by the Office of International Programs at Valley, the convocation is one of a series of events held throughout the week. Others include a fashion show and country programs where foreign students share little known facts about their homelands. Uh, they thought, the students and the language teachers say, well, why don't we do something during the language classes, invite other people in, have the international students speak about their country, something that's not commonly known. Dia Hayuni of Tunisia talks about his experience as an exchange student. The first two weeks it's been a little bit rough since it's my first time abroad and my first time away from home, away from my family. So I kind of dealt with that and I got to know really good friends, like international friends and Americans from this state and outside of the state. So it was, and from, from the beginning until now, it's very good. And Dina Abrakmanova sang the national song of her country, Kazakhstan. On the campus of Mississippi Valley State University, Woodrow Wilkins, WXVT, Delta News. Well, International Week activities conclude tomorrow with a banquet.